during the winter, especially whenever I'm not growing a winter garden like this year, I'm not because we were busy in West Texas um, instead of planting a winter garden. And then when I came back, the bugs had just taken it over so badly that I just ripped everything out. So this time of year, January, February, whenever I'm getting ready to start my seeds, if I don't have something already in the ground, I start to crave a lot of fresh food. And because I can't just go out to my garden and get some fresh food, I gotta think of other ways that I can um, have fresh food in my house um, that's quick and that's easy and that doesn't require me, um, you know, starting a garden in the middle of winter. So one of the easiest ways to do that and something that my family really enjoys is um, sprouts. Um, you could also do microgreens too. I haven't had much success with microgreens. I have had success with microgreen kits, um, but not necessarily like doing microgreens on my own. Um, maybe that's something that we can play with this year and um, find a way because I do actually prefer microgreens over um, sprouts. Um, but sprouts is just super easy. This is something I've been doing since my oldest child was a baby. So it's definitely something that you could do. Um, it's easy. It's not very expensive. Um, I get <clears throat> sprouting seeds and you can get all different flavors. This one is just a regular sandwich blend, but I also do like to get a spicy blend too that has like mustard seeds in it. I get this for Majeure. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, and then I usually put it into, you know, a container like this or something. And then all you do is you get a, um, a mason jar. Usually put about a tablespoon of seeds in there. And then once you have the seeds in there, then you're gonna put some um, filtered water. I'm using water from my Berkey. And really you just need enough water just to cover up the seeds. There you go. And then um, you're going to put something over it where it can still breathe. Um, I have these fancy metal mesh um, lids that go inside the wide mouth jars. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon. Um, they also have fermenting lids that you can put on here. But before I had any of this stuff, I just put a paper towel with a rubber band around it. It's not a big deal. You're gonna have the seeds soak like this for about 24 hours, and then you're gonna pour off the liquid, and every day you're gonna water it. And you watering it is you just putting water in here, stirring it up, pouring it off, and then you put it upside down um, so that it creates its own little greenhouse. So, a little every day you're going to put a little water in it swish it around and then pour it off and do the same thing but the first 24 hours is you just so soaking it and then after about three or four days you'll start to see that it's sprouting and within um, five days you will have sprouts that um, we just take the sprouts out and put them in a tupperware container and put them in the refrigerator and um, we put them on salads soups eggs um, sandwiches um, they're great in just about anything and depending on the flavor that you got um, de might depend on the application like I really like the spicy ones on sandwiches but the sandwich blend is also very good on sandwiches as well um, so give that a try it's a nice way to get some greens into your diet in the middle of winter when nothing's really growing so you've probably noticed in some of the b-roll of um, uh, some of our videos so far that um, you've seen me me knitting and um, and I do want to talk a little bit about knitting and craft because it is a very big part of my life and also it is something that's going to be important um, for you know keeping myself stimulated having lots of things to do especially whenever it's dark outside or the weather's not great whenever we go out to the farm um, a lot of the crafts that I have are actually useful in lots of other ways too. Um, uh, you know, knitting, you can make all kinds of things. In fact, you'll see a lot of my stuff I wear and my family wears. Socks, hats, sweaters, um, probably not as necessary down here in Texas because we just don't get that cold. But it does get cold in the desert and that is where we're moving. Um, you know, as soon as the sun hits the horizon and it's gone, it drops significantly by tens of degrees, um, depending on what time of year it is in the desert. So knitwear is going to be a little bit more important. Um, I also, um, spin right now. I use a drop spindle. I do have, I've had for several months, a, um, traditional, um, treadle, uh, spinner, spinning wheel coming to me and as soon as we get that here at the house then I'll also be um, trying to 
make my own yarn. And in addition to making my own yarn, I hope at some point whenever we are at the ranch that I can um, maybe have some lamb or some lambs or some wool or maybe alpaca or something, some kind of fiber animal that I could use in order to spin yarn. So then I'll be able to go full circle and do everything from raising the fiber myself to actually spinning it to actually turning it into consumable good like a hat or socks or mittens or something like that, which would be really, really interesting. And we can also get into some other things like dyeing at that point as well. Uh, but I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I'm working on. Um, uh, also too, if, uh, if you are a knitter, then you can find me over on Ravelry. My, um, my handle over there is Fiber Maiden. I'll also put it in the descriptions for you. Um, but so this is some sock yarn that I got from, uh, blue mule fiber um, and I got it from the local yarn store here. It reminds me of Terlingua because it's very sunsetty. I was going to design my own sock pattern and do a diamond back sock pattern on this but because it has so much variegation in it as you can tell from this beautiful yarn it um, doesn't really show lace work very well. So um, I actually got another yarn this one right here. This is Madeline Tosh. This is Gigi Loves Orange. It's beautiful as well. And this one I am going to put my design, uh, my diamond back design on in this. Um, I actually might end up just doing, this is a, my vanilla sock pattern um, that I use for everything with a flegal heel. And I might actually do a design where it's just up here at the top on the edge. So it has a little fancy edge to it. Um, and whenever I do have that pattern ready for you and tested, then I will put it up so you guys can knit it as well. But this Madeline Tosh is what I'm hoping to do my diamond back um, sock pattern with. And as soon as that comes out, I'll share it with you as well. When I was at the yarn store the other day, I also got this. It's less traveled yarn. I've never gotten this. I never bought this yarn before. It's really pretty. It says it's 75% merino and 25% nylon, which is a really good combination for sock. This is fingering weight. really beautiful like me and my son were looking at it pink and purple and brown and gold and green like it has every color of the rainbow in it so those are two little acquisitions that I have another thing that I've been working on is this really beautiful sea glass tea and um, this and that's just using up all the scraps that I have in um, in my yarn collection, all the fingering and um, sock weight yarn. So all of these were either a sock, a hat, or a mitten or something that I made at one time. And I'm learning a new skill using what's called a Norwegian thimble. And it helps you to hold two pieces of yarn at the same time, which is kind of interesting. Never used this before. And getting, getting able, being able to use up all these teeny tiny little bits of sock yarn that I have left over is a real treat because I paid a lot of money for them. And I think they're really beautiful and I'd have a hard time throwing them away, but it's not very, it's not enough to like make another pair of socks out of or anything. I'm trying to think of what else I have going on. That's pretty much it that I have going on right now. Um, I did finish a sweater which I'm pretty sure I put up on Instagram, but um, if, if not, I will check to see if I didn't put it on Instagram, but it's a really beautiful um, uh, turquoise and dark brown, black and white um, silk merino blend, and it's gonna be great for the desert as well. Um, I'll try to put some pictures of it up on Instagram if I haven't already. And you can find us over on Instagram at nine point west um, over on Instagram. We would love to see you over there. Um, but that's pretty much all I have going on for my knitting. Um, I also do a lot of sewing as well. And I have some project, project bags that I started so that I don't have to carry everything around in like plastic bags like this anymore. Um, so maybe we could do some of those together too in the, in the weeks coming up. Um, I already have 
the pieces um, cut out. I just need to get some zippers and some finishing touches and everything so that we can make those bags. And I think you'll really like them. They're super cute. Some of them have like little zombie pinup girls on them and they're all like Halloween themed and everything because if you know me, you know I love Halloween and I live like it's Halloween every single day. Um, but thank you so much for joining me and talking to talking with me about my knitting and if you'd like to join me over on Ravelry I would love to have you over there so that you can see what I'm working on and so you can show me what you're working on too. So I wanted to talk to you real quick about some equipment that you might need for seed starting um, and by no means did I have all of this stuff whenever I first started out. I've collected it slowly over the years. In fact this year I just added the dome covers. Um, before that I was using um, just like saran wrap over the top of it. Um, but I have tried to get away from single-use plastics, so I'm um, trying to find things that I can still use to accommodate uh, my seed starting practices, but things that I can reuse year after year. So definitely recommend don't go cheap, um, at, you know, and you don't need all of this stuff to get started. You could start out with what you had and then add another element to it every year. The first thing that I added was lights. Now these lights adjust up and down, and then I have some mounted underneath this um, shelf right here too. I have enough room where I can add two more on the two bottom shelves if I wanted to, um, but I haven't done that yet. Um, I just really don't have the need to grow, you know, thousands of plants. Um, I only need to grow maybe like a hundred plants. And I've set this all up in the largest south facing window that I have, and I built this pipe shelving unit over the window. So during most of the year, we use it for like homeschooling, house plants, those kinds of things. But during this time of year, you know, January, February is when we start using it to um, have our plants start. Now, the reason why I started with the lights is because the lights um, are going to be the most essential thing that you need. A sunny south facing window will do a good enough job, but your plants are going to come out really leggy, meaning they're really, really tall with very few leaves on them because they're reaching to try to get to the sun. So the closer you can get the light source to them, um, the better they'll be. And one of the reasons why I really like this setup is because I can drop it all the way down like it is now. And as the plants grow, I can pull it up higher and higher. And if you'll notice, I've actually doubled up on my trays here to make the, uh, to make the plants closer to the light. And as they grow, I can take these bottom pieces out and then also extend the plants up. Um, there'll be very few things that I have under these lights where they're feet tall, but some things grow really quickly, like um, tomatoes and sunflowers and those kinds of things. Um, the other thing that I definitely recommend is these trays. This is probably like the fifth year that I've used these trays. I paid like $30 for them on Amazon. I'll try to find some links to some and put them below for you. Um, and you can reuse them year over year. Inside of those trays, I have... Yeah, this is a 50 cell tray. So this is a reusable tray with these reusable cells inside of it so that you could do bottom watering. Bottom watering is also really essential to the seed starters, to starting, the, starting plants from seeds. And then this dome that goes over the top of it, which makes this whole set where I can make 50 plants, um, this will help to keep the moisture and the heat in like a little bitty greenhouse while the plants are germinating. Another thing that's really great to help with germination is the seed mat, uh, the seed heat mat. Um, I got this one off of Amazon as well. Um, and I also use these in the kitchen for fermenting and for sourdough and stuff like that as well. So you can use it for lots of different things, not just... And the nice thing about using this as opposed to a, like, a heating pad is heating pads are usually covered with cloth. Um, they are not waterproof. This is waterproof, so if you're not going to run the chances of electrocuting yourself if you get a little bit of water on it. Um, other than the trays and the cells and the lights and then the heat source, um, the, the most important thing that you can have is soil. And I'm going to tell you right now, your temptation after you've spent a bunch of money on this stuff is to go cheap on this. And if you have a choice over what you go cheap or expensive on, go as cheap as you can on all of this stuff and go expensive on your soil. I really love Fox Farms. I use a lot of their fertilizers and soils and everything. This is their seed starting mix. 
um, and it's called Light Warrior. Um, I've tried to get it from local nurseries, but none of the no local nurseries happen to carry this. They might carry Fox Farm, but they don't carry this Fox Farm. Um, and this is an amazing soil. It's a little bit expensive, but it's very fine and it has all the nutrients you need in it in order to keep, uh, to get your seed started. So that is my setup in order to start seeds indoors. Um, please share with me any um, tips or tricks you have for starting seeds indoors or a setup that you might have or something that you recommend to others so that we help to share the knowledge. Um, and thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day.